coming up on WordBirds. Content is all about community. Um, and community, I think, is really critical. Uh, it, they, they go hand in hand, you know. So you have to... You can't. You you have to know who your audience is, who the community is. You have to engage in the community. Um, if you're going to create content, you don't just sort of put it out there. You need to be able to to engage in those conversations and um, you know share it, hear feedback on on um, what people are talking about. Hello and welcome to Word Birds, a birds of a feather conversation amongst people who care about words. Today on the show, I have Chip Rogers. Chip is the former CMO, now Chief Partner Officer at Workspan, the ecosystem business management company. Today, we're going to talk about how the highest converting content is usually content that educates first. We're going to talk about how marketers and partner managers have huge overlapping goal sets, all of which lead to pipeline and how community engagement and great content are keys to exponential growth. Let's sit back and get some insights from the fly. What could you do with a 90% reduction in content errors, a 70% increase in content quality, and a 60% reduction in content editing costs? probably what our customers are already doing. And that's creating better content faster. Acrolinks, the amazing content company. Hello, Chip, and welcome to the show. Hey, Chris, how are you? Yeah, fantastic, lovely day here in Massachusetts. How is it where you are? Uh, beautiful, another, another great day here in uh, Northern California uh, in the Bay Area. And um, <clears throat> thanks for having me on, I'm excited to be here. Great. I am excited to have you here. Let's get right into the quick fire. I mean, I think that's where all this comes together. Um, what's the best and most successful content campaign that you've done? So, uh, you know, I, th I was thinking about this and there are actually a couple that, but, um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about one that, um, that we've done that has worked really well. Um, and it was, it was actually part of our, our SEO strategy. And building authority for our uh, domain, uh, and it's that we've we've created some guidebooks, and they're these are long form content. They're about 40, 50 page PDF documents. We have a lot of the content actually on the page uh, as well, and then there's a call to action to download the the PDF, and then we. You know, we we took a lot of time to build the content. It's around some of our hot topics like co-selling and um, you know uh, managing funds together with with your partners. And uh, you know, we took that content and then you sort of kind of chunk it out and take pieces of it, write some blogs around you know different aspects of things, point back to the um, to those guidebooks that you know are sort of the main content. And it's been tremendous. I mean, it's uh, number one, you, you do build authority. It's we've, we've on all those keywords, we've really gained um, authority and Ahrefs, you know, like number one positions and, and top 10 positions. Um, but then also you get a lot of uh, downloads and, and, uh, and interest. So, uh, and it helps you sort of build, you know, awareness and, and um, authority around, the, around those topics. I'm going to come back to that in a second. That's interesting. Um, what do you think the worst content campaign you've done is? Gosh, um, so I don't know if I, I don't know if I'd say worse. I mean, we're still doing them, but we have uh, <clears throat> we do some uh, we do some paid, you know, offsite uh, inbound links, uh, inbound linking. Um, it it <laughs> it feels. Like it works, like we get sort of, you know, more inbound links um, and it's the right sort of right message and things like that. But when you look at the the actual sources of where they're coming from, it's kind of like, yeah, you know, there's, there's, they, it does say that it has domain authority, but it's like, uh, it looks a little, mm -hmm. no, a little I, strange. It's not I can strange. envision it from my own experience. <laughs> there's some places and you're like, wow, that's, hmm. How'd we get from there to there? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where, of the two, what taught you the most? Uh, I would say the first. 
definitely. You know, we, we really learned that, you know, that that strategy works and, um, uh, and it works in a lot of, you know, for uh, the things that some of the things that I mentioned earlier, it, it works in not only in, in, you know, building domain authority and, and um, our organic links coming um, into to WorkSpan, um, but it also is, you know, converts um, into, uh, uh, into interest. So. And that, I mean, that's what we're trying to do here is get that conversion and, and make something happen is, so from a, a guidebook standpoint, this is actionable content. Do I have to be a, do I have to be a customer or a prospect to get value out of this? Or is this something that's just going to blow you out into a broader world? So great question. Um, uh, in some cases, so you don't have to be a customer. Um, you have to be sort of interested in the topic. Um, and, um, uh, but you know some of the things, some of the content is pretty squarely, kind of closely associated to our our product and our capabilities. Some of it is a little more broad and mm. more about the category and um, and uh, just sort of trying to put good information out into the world. Yeah, and that's I mean I think that's the best kind of content you can create. It's it's been a a longstanding strategy from my organizations to think first about what solves a problem in the market, regardless of whether you're ever going to buy us, um, because that's how I attract the crowd. And then from that crowd, we're going to be able to pull the people that we're most interested in that fit our ICP um, that we can actually sell to. But the interesting thing is all those people that we didn't sell to the first time will probably possibly move into companies that will be prospects in the future. So that mm. awareness building that comes from great content doesn't have to be an in the moment thing. Success comes over time. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. And I think it's, it's, you know, it's sort of building some awareness um, even early on so that at the point that they're starting to think about, Hey, this is a problem I've, you know, that's, that's coming up for us and we don't want to solve it, that uh, you're, you're, there's at least some recall that, Oh, these guys, you know, uh, maybe they can help. Absolutely. They help me just learn some things before. Yep. And and it always comes back to that brand recognition of who who has the answer. Because at the end of the day, I mean, nobody's going on the internet looking for business-to-business -business software vendors. They're going on the internet to find answers. I'm having a problem at work. I want something to easily solve my problem. And then they find content. And if the content solves their problem, the, the side benefit of solving their problem is that awareness that you create within that that prospect base. And if they can buy your product, that's fantastic. If they can't, maybe someday they can. If they will never, it's still positive market awareness out there. Um, I love that well, that approach. Chris, I, and uh, while we're on that topic, I think, you know, um, I mean, you know, we're, we're on a podcast right now. Um, uh, that one of the other uh, campaigns I was going to talk about was I also have a podcast as well, uh, Ecosystem Aces, that I've had you know, going for about five years now, a couple hundred episodes. And, and um, that also is even more sort of top of funnel because, you know, <clears throat> um, you know, and like you, I think, you know, we, we, we talk to people that are not customers that are just sort of professionals that are in this, in the space, in the category uh, and talk about very, you know, like what's happening with them? What are the challenges? How, what have you found? Like we're talking about today, what works, mm -hmm. what doesn't work, um, and uh, and again, it's very, it's it's not product related at all, um, but it's about things that are that um, that uh, you know, folks that are in our industry are interested in. So I think that's that w I would I would add that as another um, really good content um, program. Absolutely. I mean, and, and when it's entertaining, like, like this is, um, it just pulls other people in. Like my dad, my, my dad listens to every episode of this. Hi dad. Um, I don't know. He's been retired for a number of years. He's a captain in the Navy, was a captain in the Navy. And yet this is, this is content that he'll consume. So yeah. I don't know if he can buy your product. He definitely can't buy mine. Um, uh, but, uh, he's all in on this. Yeah. Um, let's talk about you in particular, because I think this is really interesting. You 
have been with uh, WorkSpan for six and a half years now. And for the first six and a half years of that time, you've been involved in marketing. A um, couple promotions in there, CMO. Uh, recently, and, and I think it's interesting that this is an ecosystem business management product, um, you've moved into the chief partner role. And A, tell me a little bit about that. And then B, how... How does that progress? How similar is that? What are the differences uh, when you look at what you're setting out to do now in this new role? Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, uh, and um, thank you, Chris. Uh, you're exactly right. I, I um, just about a month ago uh, uh, switched into a chief partner officer role, and um, I'm excited about it. It's it's been um, uh, it's been a lot of fun, sort of kind of. It, it has been. It is our domain, right? It's the domain that we um, operate in, and I've I've been in marketing for a long time, but I've also had roles that were um, partner related, where I was actually managing partners and um, working with partners to to um, co-sell with. And um, you know, it's it is uh, it's different, but there are similarities as well because we're all going to market. Together and um, uh, and you know what Workspan is about. How do you co-sell with partners? And co-selling is is really like that's sort of the umbrella term, but it's really about okay. Well, maybe we're going to build products together, and then if we're going to do do that, then we'll we need to go to market. So we're doing some mar- you know co-marketing um, together, and then co-selling, and we might actually take some money and apply it back for incentives and things like that. So. That sort of flywheel of of everything that includes a lot of marketing, if you will, going to market together with with partners. So, um, I you know I still feel like I'm in a similar domain in you know in a way because it's still go, it's still about going to market, um, and um, you know it's it's uh, it's been it's been fun so far and and I'm excited about the about the role. Did you? own business development partnerships before in your CMO role? Uh, early on I did. And then we've sort of, it's, it's moved around a little bit, but it was, it was a decision that we made as a leadership team that, you know, we really need a um, sort of a single point of, of, we have a lot of partnerships that are, that are happening, some new ones that we're developing and we really needed the focus of, of um, having a, a single, single person responsible and growing it. How are you going to be measured? Like, what is the major metric that you're trying to drive in that role? Uh, ultimately, it's revenue, <clears throat> uh, pipeline and revenue. And, um, you know, so that's a pretty simple measure. There's always a question of, you know, sourced, at, uh, uh, influenced, and those kinds of things. But um, we'll, work, uh, we'll work those out. But I think that's, I mean, so it was a leading question and I was hoping that you were going to answer it the way, the exact way that you did, because I, I literally just had this conversation today with our partnership organization. It's so, so our partner group lives in sales and we're in a call talking about their contribution, the programs that they're running and the things that they could do to be additive in prospecting. And so much of what they do is very marketing oriented, creating programs to assist the sales organization um, in being impactful with the partners that we have. The experience is such an overlap in the way that we measure. So they're responsible for pipeline. We're responsible for pipeline and marketing. I'm responsible for pipeline overall as the chief pipeline officer. And all this comes back to trying to fuel this engine. So this leap from marketing to partner is not nearly as big as the the word on the page because at the end of the day you're going to just take a different group of people and try and drive this same type of impact but at a broader scale because of the scalability of the partner channel that we don't have in marketing i don't i can't add just automatically add another group of people that can add value you can identify a, a, a new part of a channel and drive exponential growth. I think that's actually really exciting when you think about what your what your future growth opportunity really is. Yeah, you're and you're exactly right, Chris. It's um, it 
is, uh, I mean, that's just spot on. It's, uh, and these days, you know, we're so challenged with, e even as marketers, you know, with, um, you know, cookies going away, people just getting, you know, overwhelmed with and inundated with messaging and just noise and, you know, <laughs> that the, the opportunity of working with partners and, you know, and, uh, you know, in this, in this new world it used to be that partnering was, you know, okay, I've got a product and you're going to go sell it for me. Like you're my partner, right? Well, today there's some of that that still goes on, but it's more about, Hey, I've got a product, you've got a product, you've got a service. Maybe there are two or three of us working together. We all want to close this deal. Um, and so it's, it's, it's coordinating, working together and, uh, co-selling and, bringing the influence of all two or three partners to bear to, you know, close the deal. I may have really good relationships in one area, <clears throat> maybe in the line of business. One of my partners might have a really good relationship in, um, you know, in the IT organization or in a different region, but they all might be influencing on the deal uh, or, or um, uh, you know, decision makers in the deal. And so you've, you've really just expanded your 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 team as you're as you're saying like you know um and you can't go to hire all those people right? no so, yeah. i mean the, the right partnership changes a business i remember uh, two companies ago i was at a mobile development platform company and we were a very early partner with that little company up in waterloo called blackberry and back when they were rim and Every license of software that we sold resulted in a device ad for them in the financial services industry in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And as a result, they funded my entire operation from a marketing standpoint. I got hundreds of thousands of dollars a year from RIM to drive my marketing because we were aiming for the same thing. And the synergy was so huge because we were successful. They were successful. They were specifically successful in a region that they were trying to break into. It was fantastic and i never could have done and we never could have built the business that we built without that type of partnership that's a great story and, and I've, I've been chasing that that same situation ever since then i mean that was 2006 time frame and you just you can't it's hard to replicate but when you find that that perfect connection of our thing and your thing and exponential growth my god that's it's it's so much different than just hiring an additional demand person and doing more campaigns. Right. This right. is this is the real growth that takes you to the next level, which is fantastic. Um, I, I mean, I think you know one of the interesting challenges, and and for people that are wondering, this is the Friends of the Birds season, and how do I know Chip? The very first conversation that we had um, on a on a one on one, well, it was probably three on one uh, at the time, was around the creation of of categories. And uh, you know, I'm involved in in selling a product that nobody really recognizes. Um, and we've made up a lot of different categories. Analysts don't have a category for us. And so the idea of how do we build, define and build a category? And, and I think ecosystem business management is, is a fast growing category. So the first thing you had to do in your marketing role was really establish your the category and your place in it. How are you continuing to to grow this business in this fast growing category space? Uh, so it has been a really interesting journey. Um, we started actually in 2018 and, um, uh, you know, with this idea, like, let's, we, we need to really, you know, sort of create this new category because it's very, something very different than what has been done before. Um, and we actually, have, um, <clears throat> uh, myself and, um, our, um, leadership team sat down and, and wrote, uh, like a 10 point category creation project plan <laughs> seen it <laughs> yeah. and uh you know it, it's there are a lot of really you know um very tangible things that you can do i mean we worked with a lot of influencers we you know built a community of sort of like-minded um uh people uh, you know um uh, fellow travelers if you will uh, you know, it's about creating new language and and understand defining and really creating some sharp differences in what what are the you know what's sort of the old way and the new way. 
Um, and it's a number of things like that. Working with analysts, um, I mean, I had, I counted at one point, I think over a year and a half, I had like 120 um, uh, analysts, you know, either briefings or inquiries. Um, and it's sort of like creating this, you know, the idea around, hey, this is something that's, that is very different from the current categories that are out there. Uh, now, you know, there are a lot of new companies that are coming into the space. There are a lot of startups. There's, you know, um, and we've been at it for a while. How do we, what was your original question? How do we continue to, to how do you, how do you grow in this sort of it, the category that you created that you became a part of, uh, that you inhabited has grown dramatically in the last yeah. five years and it, it's continuing to accelerate. It's not getting less important. It's yeah. arguably getting more important. And how do you, how do you lead that business to the next stage? So it's a great question. I think it's a lot of it is, uh, being engaged in the community and, um, uh, and I, I think it's also really important that, uh, and it's some of the things that we've been talking about with content where, uh, you can't, you can't always be pitching, right? You, you really need to be enthusiastic and, uh, and provide and put content out into the world that's about the category. Um, and about the growth of the category and uh, cheer everybody on, right, that's, um, that's helping to grow the category. I mean, it's, it's, it's at a point that, you know, it's, we're all still growing and the more that people that are yeah. uh, companies that think that there's an opportunity and more VCs and funding and things like that that come into it, it's all good, right? Um, and we feel like we are still, um, and we're, we've grown. When I joined, we were 25 um, employees were now up to like 220, um, continuing to grow and and um, and leading in the category. So it's um, I'm not sure. You just have to sort of keep at it, and, and I think uh, uh, and and be the be the cheerleader for the for the category and 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 for our users and um, uh, and uh, the folks that are having the challenges that they've uh, that we that we help solve. And I think, I mean, not to overuse the word ecosystem, but it is about, you know, engaging with the entire ecosystem to do that. I think one of the things that I thought was really fun when we set out to create the content impact space was calling competitors, calling the CEO at companies that we, we see in deals and say, Hey, do you like the way that people describe you? Cause I, I don't like the way that people describe us or the companies that they compare us to. Mm -hmm we should probably be talking about this as a group for the very reason that you said it doesn't it doesn't matter that we're all in the same thing it makes it better that companies vcs investors analysts can identify something that's boiling up if we're all saying our own thing there is no boil up it's just a bunch of random companies right. that you are making up terms. Of one one company right? mm -hmm. <laughs> we we win every wave and every magic quadrant because we're the only ones on it and i don't I don't relish the idea of having to do a magic quadrant project, but also I would like to be able to be in a magic quadrant. So we need enough companies in this space to have that conversation. And I, I think one of the interesting things that's happened recently is generative AI has hit and being in the content space, it's all, all of a sudden we're all wrapped up in something that people can understand. When you talk about content governance to a year ago, people were like, I don't, think that's super important. Oh, well, I assume um, with generative AI, you want to tune your own model. Sure. Okay. Yes. And you only want to tune it with your best content. Mm -hmm. Yep. High quality, best content. Cool. How do you know? How do you know? Oh, content governance. <laughs> yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense now. And, and getting back to that, bringing it all in to that as the primary. And there's so many companies that play on the periphery of that, that maybe this is a moment um, where that category process comes together, but jury's out. Um, a thing I like to do, uh, PSOTD, provocative statement of the day. It is a position that you hold that you're not sure others hold and maybe people would disagree with, but it helps you get through your day. What's your PSOTD? Well, um, so I, I think, you know, I thought about this. I think the, um, the, uh, what I would say is, is content is all about community. Um, and community, I think, is really critical. 
uh, it, they, they go hand in hand, you know, so you have to, you can't, you, you have to know who your audience is, who the community is. You have to engage in the community. Um, if you're going to create content, you don't just sort of put it out there. You need to, you know, you're putting out content, but you're also, you know, if you put it up on LinkedIn or wherever and social media, like people are going to react to it. You need to be able to, to engage in those conversations and, um, you know, share it, hear feedback on, on, um, what people are talking about. And, um, and I think, so I, that, that's my, is content and community have to be very tightly, uh, interlinked. I can see how some people might say that's not true, but I'm not one of them um, because I agree 100%. I think if I look back on my last uh, company, we created content. We spoke directly to DevOps and we're a marketing team. And to be fair, most of my people didn't know deadly about DevOps, couldn't define it, don't know who works in it, don't know what they care about. But when we created content, we created content with people that understood that space because if you're just yelling into a crowd... In, in a language other than the one they use, if you're not native to that audience, they know. I mean, the obvious example is it's a bunch of English speaking people and I'm yelling at them in Hebrew. They don't understand what I'm saying. And that was our position with DevOps is if I just yell in marketing terms, they're not going to understand or care about what we're saying. So the idea of yeah, knowing the audience, understanding what they care about. Things like we were a mobile cloud testing company, but they don't want to hear about testing. They're not looking for QA products. They care about quality software. Please say quality, not test in everything. And you can't describe what we did without saying the word test. So assume that the editorial process was a lot of cleanup of these things that were immediate turnoffs to the audience we're, create, we're communicating with. And then, like you said, when we, when we socialize this and share this content and have these conversations online, having that domain expertise was super important to me. It can't be our social media expert that's responding to this. It has to be product management, product marketing that understand the people that we're communicating with that are the people we're communicating with. And that's what makes that engagement super positive. If not, I mean, even if we create the best content in the world, if we can't support it with, with that domain expertise, then it doesn't, it doesn't work. And we're transparent. We, everybody yeah. can see through us. Yeah. We, they know we're not real. And, and reality just, matters. Know, to, the, uh, to, to, to exactly your point, I, I did similar experience with SAP. I was with uh, SAP for 13 years and led the, our uh, SAP community and tech ed events and, you know, for, um, about eight years and, uh, same thing. The community was, was, it was developers and enterprise architects and people that were really engaged in building SAP solutions, but a lot of developers and exactly the same thing. I had a team that was tended to be more marketers, but we'd learned and they, and they had learned, <clears throat> um, and I communicate, you know, I like drove this message to them and they became passionate about it as well. You can't like, you can't just have marketers sort of drop in and start putting stuff into a community, <laughs> especially mm -hmm. developers. They're just like, you know, they, they could smell it a mile away and it's like, no, no, thanks. I am tuning you out and not interested. hundred percent. Even within my own organization, when, when we talk to our own developers, like, eh, I don't know. Okay. Fair. Fantastic. Chip, thank you very much for being on the show. This is fantastic. Excited to have you on. Thank you very much. Likewise, Chris. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on and, and um, love your podcast and, and good luck with uh, season four. Excellent. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for listening to Word Birds. Word Birds is hosted by Chris Willis, produced by Charlotte Baxter Reed, and brought to you by Acrolinks. For more information on Acrolinks, visit www.acrolinks.com.